Samsung released a bunch of QLED TVs in 2019, and here I have the Q80R, which sits right below the Q90R flagship 4K QLED. Is it worth your hard earned money? Stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man here, and on this channel we do unboxings, demos, comparisons, tips, and real world reviews so you can get the most out of the tech that entertains you, all in 4K HDR. So if you want to see more videos on 2019 4K HDR TVs like this one, or even learn more about components to pair with them so you can have an awesome home theater system, then you have come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. Now, so far in 2019, Samsung has released four 4K QLED TVs, the Q60R, the Q70R, the Q80R that we have right here, and above that sits the Q90R. The one we have here is the 65 inch version. It's also available in a 55, 65, and 75, and eventually even an 82 inch version, for those of you who want total wall domination. If you want to see what comes in the box or how to set it up, then you can check out my unboxing and setup video that's linked up here and also in the description. So I've been living with the Q80R for the past few weeks and have been using it as my primary TV during that time. In this review, I'll be going over the specs and features of the TV and what it's been like to live with during that time. First up though, how about them specs? The TV is a quantum dot LCD TV with a full array local dimming backlight system. It has 96 dimmable zones, which makes it better than traditional edge lit TVs. The backlight system in the TV, which Samsung dubs the direct full array 8X, isn't as good as the 16X version found in the Q90R. The TV has four HDMI ports, two USB ports, and a 4.1 channel audio system. It sounds good for built-in audio, but anyone who's serious about surround sound audio will want an external system. The TV will pass Dolby Atmos to your compatible receiver or soundbar from the built-in apps using the ARC from HDMI 4 port. It has a quad-core quantum processor 4K that's responsible for upscaling and color management, Samsung's ultra viewing angle technology, which is meant to improve off-axis viewing so that people who sit off to the sides can still have a good picture. And let me just say that it works surprisingly well. There is no noticeable shifting in colors or loss in contrast during off-axis viewing. It is a huge improvement over last year's TVs. It also has a special anti-reflective coating, which can only be described as sorcery. My only gripe with the coating is that if there's a bright light in front of the screen or in the periphery of it, it will produce some slight glare, the kind that makes it look like Michael Bay had a hand in designing it. The tuner and brains of the TV are all internal to the set, so there isn't a one connect box here, and that coupled with the fact that it's a full array local dimming TV means it is not that thin. The back juts out a bit slightly from the curve of the back panel. Speaking of which, let's talk design for a bit. The bezels of the TV are thin and made from a brushed aluminum. The feet for the stands are a little less than 3.5 feet apart, which could limit the kinds of TV stands you can use it with it. The back of the TV is a ridged grey plastic, which looks pretty slick and adds some pretty nice design flair for a part of the TV that you won't often see. Behind there also lives the channels for cable management, which leads down to the feet which keeps the cables together. Samsung's Tizen is one of the best smart TV OS's. It's quick, feature packed, and has all the apps you need in this card interface. The TV automatically recognizes devices plugged into the HDMI ports and automatically configures the TV's remote to work with certain devices like your streaming box or your cable box. Speaking of cable, the 1080p upscaling of this TV is very interesting. I remember it initially being noticeably worse than my current TV, but it actually improved over the time I've used it. I didn't expect that, and it actually shows that the AI picture processing of the quantum processor 4K isn't a gimmick. So about the picture quality, Samsung made some questionable decisions as far as default settings are concerned. Like having Auto Motion Plus on by default and having it set to the warm picture preset which made colors noticeably too warm. But that was easy enough to fix, you can check out the video on the best picture settings for 4K movies and gaming in the card linked up there and in the description also. 
I mostly use the accurate movie mode during my time with the TV. The other modes were either too saturated, too much contrast, which led to some black crush, so I used the movie preset. That said, I still wasn't happy with the picture of the default movie mode on the Samsung. It lacked contrast and the colors just weren't as vibrant as I was expecting from a QLED. The image just looked flat and didn't pop off the screen as I expected. At all, really. That wasn't until I made some tweaks of my own. What was that change? I turned on Contrast Enhancer. Once I made that change and some other tweaks, the picture of the Q80R was great. The colors popped and it's a QLED of course, so it has the power to get very bright. But as we all know, with great power comes great responsibility. So I'm, <laughs> so I'm glad to say that Samsung included the intelligent mode, which makes it very easy to access without menu diving. With the intelligent mode, the TV will adjust the picture and sound based on your room and content you're watching. So when my room got dark, it turned on the backlight so it didn't singe my retinas and it turned it back up when the room was brighter, like in the daytime viewing. It made using the TV seamless no matter if it was day or nighttime viewing. And instead of crushing blacks, I found where Contrast Enhancer boosts the details in the shadows at the expense of highlight detail. So the overall scene in effect will appear brighter because the highlights are more pronounced. This will certainly be a case of personal preference, of course, but I personally preferred Contrast Enhancer set to low, not high, where I found that it would blow out the highlight detail. But it's definitely something to play around with to see which setting you prefer. Now let's talk about the panel. There was no noticeable panel uniformity issues. The only issue I've noticed with this TV is the one that I've noticed on other Samsung TVs I've reviewed in the past, and that's micro blocking. In black and near black scenes, I've noticed it enough times for it to range from slightly annoying to very distracting. And the weird thing is, this isn't an issue I've experienced with other brand TVs using the same source that I've looked at. So it definitely has to do with Samsung's picture processing. Episode 3 of Season 8 of Game of Thrones was the perfect example of this. Even though it's a full array local dimming TV, there was also noticeable blooming on bright objects on a dark background. It is noticeably worse than the Q9FN that I reviewed last year, but that can be attributed to the Q80R having less dimmable zone in its array. But even so, the black levels are still good, just not as good as its bigger brother. I mainly noticed this in game modes and movies with subtitles. During loading screens, it was very obvious, but it's also apparent on most screens when there's a light object on a black or near black background. Enough to be a bit distracting. That's as far as the picture uniformity issues went with the TV though. There was no dirty screen effect, no ghosting, and no screen door effect. In the gaming demo, it might not be very obvious, but since the TV is FreeSync compatible, it's also able to vary the refresh rate of the screen to match the range of the game being played. So that takes care of screen tear and jitter, which can often happen on a TV with fixed refresh rates. Playing action games like God of War and FPSs like Wolfenstein 2 was super smooth and very responsive because the TV has a low input lag of under 20 milliseconds while in game mode. So to summarize, this TV is a premium full array local dimming 4K HDR TV for anyone who wants to do a lot of gaming, sports, or movie watching, but the low number of local dimming zones make it not the best performer in darker scenes. At the current price of about $3,000 at the time of this review, it's kind of hard to recommend it when you could get the last year's Q9FN, which has much better picture performance and most of its features for a similar price. Or even a TCL 6 series full array local dimming TV, which also has support for Dolby Vision, which Samsung TVs don't support. So what's your thought on this TV? Are you considering getting this one or another 4K HDR TV this year? Let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to like the video if you found it useful. Also, if you want to support the channel so we can help bring you more content like this, then feel free to buy your new TV using the links in the description, even if it's not this TV. Also, you can visit the Villa Man merch store for cool t-shirts like this. Until next time, this has been your friend and neighborhood Villa Man saying, peace. Thank <laughs> you.